Welcome to Enterprise IoT Insights. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Aran Eshet. He is co-founder and VP of Marketing at Altair Semiconductor. Thanks so much for making the time today. Thank you for having me. So you have told me that you have been so busy with meetings here at MWCA that you haven't even made it to the show floor. So what, what are people interested in? Which ones of your solutions are people really asking a lot about? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think IoT is a big theme. Mm -hmm. And when you speak about IoT connectivity, is what makes IoT IoT, right? It's about uh, connecting uh, many, many endpoints and getting data from those endpoints to the cloud and then analyzing them and you know making decisions. So we provide the connectivity uh, part of it. And uh, these standards are new, you know, the uh, category M1 and narrowband IoT. And I think many players are still trying to figure out what actually uh, can you get today and in the future? What are the KPIs that these technologies can support? You know, uh, power consumption, battery life, so many different aspects of these technologies. So, you know, in 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 this uh, in this industry, it all starts from the chipsets, right? That's where the capabilities are built uh, initially. Everything is on top of that. So, naturally, the semiconductor uh, layer is one that you know gathers a lot of interest from customers. So are you seeing more interest in uh, Category M or narrowband IoT or something else? Uh, it's a good question. So this is a US-centric uh, show. And in that sense, uh, we do see a lot more interest in Cat M. And there's different names, right? Cat M, LTM, Category M1 all mean the same. Uh, and there uh, or here, uh, two out of the uh, three you know, or four tier one carriers have publicly announced and uh, widely deployed Cat M. Uh, the third carrier uh, has announced uh, NB IoT. Uh, but definitely, the U.S. this time is leading the pack on deployment of these technologies, and Cat M is the area of focus. And you were mentioning KPIs earlier. What what are some of the the metrics that the customers are most interested in, uh, and what are you able to tell them about those metrics? So, you know, first of all, uh, it's uh, unfortunate, but this is the case. It's always how much does it cost, yeah. right? Uh, and less so about performance. So the big thing about these technologies is, yeah, it's, you know, there's low power and extended coverage and so forth, but the big, um, you know, change uh, that these technologies are supposed to bring is much, much lower price points on modules, and uh, so I think that, that is the first question. And then uh, you have things like um, coverage extensions, which uh, um, allow getting um, reception of communicating you know, in basements and in areas where previously you, know, you just could not do that. Uh, and then there's power consumption. I think these are most uh, important, you know, cost, coverage, uh, or link budget, and uh, power consumption. Uh, Bit rates is really not something, or speeds is not something that customers care in this market in most use cases. Right. Some of the, the speeds and bit rates are very, very low. They're very low, and in fact, even in some cases, cellular offers more than the customer needs, but as long as it has the right uh, you know, price, you know, size, power consumption, or battery life, you know, it's, it works. Now, I think AT&T has said, what, 750 for their Cat M modules, is that right? Yeah, they uh, publicly announced uh, a program, part of which in certain volumes you can get these modules uh, at a 750 okay. price point. Okay. And then do you think when NBIoT comes, those prices will be even lower? Generally speaking, I do think that NBIoT prices will be slightly lower. Okay. Uh, they won't be significantly okay. lower. Uh, but you may see, you know, like half a dollar, dollar uh, difference, uh, more or less. Uh, but I think the, um, the, the competitive landscape scape is going to be mostly on a geographical scale or on a market-by-market -market basis. What this means is that, you know, in the U.S., you know, the name of the game is Cat M. Yes, there's, you know, another carrier deploying narrowband IoT, but it's mostly going to be the, the um, you know, the competitive dynamics between these two guys. In other markets, you know, like in China, it's going to be more uh, narrowband IoT centric. So what will actually determine the prices of these modules is not so much, you know, is this narrowband or CAT-M, it's the competitive dynamic in that specific 
uh, market. So if one carrier says 750, the other carrier cannot offer these modules at $10, yeah. naturally. So it's, it's a little more complex than just, you know, what is the cost of the chip? Right. Well, and, but there's also the data cost, right? They and the service cost, which I think uh, is very much application dependent okay. uh, and use case dependent. And I think we're all kind of also trying to understand what customers are willing to pay and um, it's, it's an iterative Native process. Right, right. Do you work with uh, both AT&T and Verizon? Yeah, we work with both. Uh, we work with additional carriers as well, but uh, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned before, uh, as uh, opposed to, let's say, you know, GSM markets in the past, in this case, U.S. is indeed, these two carriers are indeed in the forefront of deployment of CAT-M. They, they set the tone. If you're playing in the CAT-M space, you have to be working with these two carriers. So we're definitely um, cooperating with both. Uh, we've um, tested and certified our chipsets uh, on both networks. And of course, as we roll on new products, uh, we'll continue you know, testing, certifying, and working closely with these guys. So, so once your chip is certified on these networks, the next step is that a module maker gets a, a complete module certified on the network? Is yes. that how that works? Typically, uh, typically we certify the chipset. Okay. Uh, based on that certified chipset, uh, if a module uh, vendor is involved, they would certify a module with a much, much smaller subset of testing okay. uh, because there is an assumption that the heavy lifting has been done on the chipset. And then when the device vendor certifies their product based on a certified module, there's a yet even smaller regression that they would have to perform. Oh, okay. Okay. So the heavy lifting is definitely on the chipset uh, vendor. And we see uh, from these carriers and others a trend of trying to lower the barrier and minimizing the number of test cases and, uh, and, and the equipment that you have to uh, you know, invest in in order to get this testing done. Because at the end of the day, this cost is amortized you know, on, on, on the module selling price eventually. Yeah. You know, and these are very high investments. So if, uh, if IoT is to really proliferate and sell for, you know, $5 eventually or even less, the cost of certification has to go dramatically down, and, 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 and it is happening. But it's you think there is still sufficient testing? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, you know, when you test a phone with, mm -hmm. 20 bands and you know it supports voice and supports you know high performance data uh, use cases it's one thing but uh, when you uh, when you test IOT you know you have a sensor that transmits once a day <laughs> naturally the level of testing right. is different right okay and are there any certain verticals where you're seeing demand being particularly strong yes um, definitely uh, the verticals that we see today um, are mostly in the uh, utilities space of okay. so smart metering, uh, electricity, gas, water. Uh, that would be one. The second one would be uh, all kinds of tracking devices, whether these are more um, enterprise like fleet management uh, or uh, consumer, you know, pets, kids, uh, elderly people. Basically, location-based services or tracking is a big, is a big trend. Um, and telematics. Telematics. So a lot okay. of insurance-based or, or uh, um, usage-based insurance type applications. Those are kind of the obvious ones. And in fact, these are not new use cases. They're used today with CDMA or GSM. And only now can cellular 4G, basically. Uh, um, cater to the needs of, of these use cases because yeah. the power consumption and the cost and, and the size has really gone down dramatically. So for the consumer use cases, does your relationship with Sony help you? I believe so. <laughs> uh, I mean, Sony is definitely, I mean, we are part of the semiconductor. Uh, it's called Sony Semiconductor Solutions. So it's basically a semiconductor company. Uh, however, of course, we have sister companies, uh, some of which sell, you know, consumer uh, products, and um, they could be potential customers, uh, okay. but 
clearly they have relationships with channels and you know customers and carriers that we can leverage. So I believe it does help. Okay, great. Ron Eshid, co-founder of Altair Semiconductor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.